broadcast. Podcast number 88. Democratic debate fallout analysis, featuring Mike from COT being rebroadcast here on N Generation Project. This episode originally aired on June 27, 2024, exclusively on counciloftime.com. For more details, check the link in the description below. Join Michael from Council of Time as we explore eschatology and navigate today's challenges in this captivating episode number 88, Democratic Debate Fallout Analysis. To gain deeper insights, visit the Council of Time's official website linked below. We're dedicated to providing truth, hope, and support to those struggling with addiction and seeking divine guidance. Your support helps us guide individuals towards truth, sobriety, and preparedness for the perilous times foretold in scripture. Join our exclusive Locals community for EGP family members and enjoy early access to exciting content. Thank you for being an integral part of the End Generation Project's success. Before diving into today's rebroadcast podcast, episode 88 titled, Democratic Debate Fallout Analysis, we're excited to announce the rollout of new features on our YouTube channel. We're introducing Super Chat premieres and a new merch store directly on the End Generation Project channel. You can now purchase our latest designs on a variety of merch, from hoodies to limited edition prints and posters. Stay tuned for these exciting updates coming soon. Your support through these past months has been crucial. These new features will allow us to reach more people, offer more insightful episodes, and expand our mission. By shopping with us, you're not just getting great products, you're making a meaningful impact on our community. We couldn't have come this far without the support of all our Inc. members and God's blessing. Visit our store now to explore our collection and help sustain our efforts. Thank you for your continued support and generosity. Now let's kick back and listen to Michael's analysis on the presidential debate last night between President Trump and President Biden. Blessings. I want to give you guys the uh, fallout from the debate. You guys do understand that the entire Democratic Party is in emergency mode. Just so you know that. This debate... This debate, it was honest, it was fair, it was. But now the Democrats are in emergency mode. Just so you know that. There was a bit of uh, discontinuity in some of the responses from Biden, but what it really gave was how engaged the person is. And now even the Democrat, those in the Democratic Party are shaken tonight they are they're shaken they're shaken it was one-sided they're very shaken and so you guys know what that means people have made up their mind already they've already made up their mind Uh, just in case you have not watched it uh, if you're sensitive to politics uh, actually it was something I think it was something that is good to see anyway because you could uh, those who are moderating they stayed with the questions, but the answers were somewhat disturbing on, on one side, though. And again, I said this in Pastor Paul's show, that this could be one of those times when a Republican is bought into a Democratic forum and it converts the Democrats that were there to a Republican mindset. This has happened before, and it seems like it happened Tonight it did. It did. So, in essence, uh, the Dems feel like they're in trouble because they have no candidate going forward. You know, they like Joe Biden, but, again, age is something that none of us escape. And at some point, you, you, you just simply, your brain is not as fast as it used to be. Your body is not as fast as it used to be. It's just not. And uh, this is what we've not been in this situation before where a person their age actually caught up to him, right? We've not been in this situation. So this is a brand new situation uh, that America's been in to have a candidate, you know, one that is whose age has caught up to him, right? 
And then I have another candidate who is not far behind him, but is at least cognitive. So I, I can already anticipate that much of America would like to have, you know, some fresh people there. Yes, but, but, you know, from what we have, we have one side. This just, um, by way of conference, a lot of people are not going to vote for that person because they don't think they can maintain that office. You know, did I kind of prove that? I, personally, I think the engagement was, it was something to see. It really was. And it really demonstrated uh, some very straightforward questions people had. It's one thing when people speak for you, but when people hear uh, for themselves what your answers are, how you engage us, any other, then they can evaluate based upon what they want. And I believe that people, uh, they can actually finally make that decision. They may not like it, but they're going to have to make that decision. And for the sake of the country, I hope that Christians uh, can understand that uh, some type of leadership is going to be elected and that we have a we have a higher calling also we have a calling to intercede in those areas of leadership uh, where satan would take full advantage of there are massive vulnerabilities in in those candidates should they be put in that seat of power and it's up to us to intercede on their behalf with our father that they not be compromised by the spirit of revenge by the spirit of envy, by bitterness, by all these things, because it was some grievances that were spoken tonight. It was some true grievances. It was it was passionate, right? But it was also it was a little disturbing, because you see that you see the massive dislike of, of these two gentlemen have their belief about the country. They're very different. One is able; the other one is questionable. The one who is able, though, you know, that one clearly, clearly, I mean, people, they can argue about the outcome. But right now, as it stands, the country knows what the outcome is. They know what they have to do for the sake of the country. But Christians have to get behind the word of the Lord to stand up for the gospel and to go forward in strength, not bow down into a corner and see what happens. We're not to see what happens. That's not our role. That's not why we believe. We believe that we may intercede. Just as in the Bible it says that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Right? We house Christ. Do we not? And so we are to stand to destroy the works of the devil as he would seek to use those in leadership against innocent folks. Right? So... We have to do something, too. We're going to have to stand in our strength. So when everybody's looking at us like we're crazy, we're going to have to stand with integrity and in prayer for the gospel of Jesus Christ. When people start to bow out, when people give in to emotions, we've got to stand firm and strong on the word of God and not fold and not be given into these emotional states and all these other things but to stand firm in our faith with the gospel of Jesus Christ. True believers, if we don't do it this time, you know what Satan will do. This is going to be a one-sided race. The outcome is somewhat clear. It is. It is somewhat clear. This is also going to cause some hostilities, and it's going to be plagued with problems, right? Because it's a one-sided race. If Christians do not take a stance this time, this is the last time then Satan's going to have his way and if that happens we deserve everything we get if we refuse to stand for the gospel then in fact are we not denying the Lord before men I don't know about you but I'm not going to do it because he did not deny dying on the cross before the father for my sake because if he did I would not believe in him but I do believe in him. And anybody who believes in Christ, God put that belief in you. You didn't get that on your own. God put that belief in you that you may be kept. You're not here to be lost. So don't walk forward questioning being lost. Just continue to say yes to Christ. 
We have to be anchored in the gospel to walk in truth. And we're not to walk without power. Jesus never sent anybody forward powerless. You're not to go forward powerless. But it's time for us to conform fully, isn't it? Not like some cult would do in the world. No, to the gospel of Jesus Christ upon those principles. Not mincing words and twisting this, that, and the other. Not giving in to people who would instantly change their views to get more votes. No, not to involve ourselves deeply in these campaigns which would compromise the soul. No, but to stand firm in our faith to intercede in any area that Satan would seek to usurp because you know a dark kingdom is rising. The evidence is all throughout humanity. That's what you're seeing with humanity. The rise of a dark kingdom, the rise of a dark influence. It's not our father's influence. He does not inspire violence and envy and strife and all these things that you see in the world. He inspires righteousness, goodness, doesn't he? Humility, power, meekness, right? Reconciliation, that's what he inspires. He does not inspire confusion, division, and all these things. I don't blame men either. We know who's behind it. The Bible is clear of what we're wrestling against. We're not wrestling against or we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We don't have a war against our fellow man. It's against Satan who would ever seek to use any vessels of flesh to expand his domain. God gave us the power to put an end to that wherever we are. His prophecies will still come to pass. God's prophecies. Nobody else's God's prophecies will come to pass. But he's given us authority to make a huge difference. Remember, this is about the souls of men. This is not about winning a position. This is about the souls of men. We already know our father's sentiment about winning. Right? Why would a man gain the whole world to lose his own soul? So we know he's not behind the winning thing. He's behind the salvation of souls. He's behind righteousness and light to be decent and in order. Hmm. They can't, they can't, they're stuck. Tonight demonstrated that. This was a one-sided debate. It really was. But they're stuck. They are stuck. They don't really have a selection of people to select from. They don't. So we know which way this is going. But it's also going to require all of us. The rest of the world was watching. Hope you know that. And if because the rest of the world was watching, they do understand that one of them will not play games. They understand that. They also understand that these both these guys were emotional. And you don't play games with an emotional person especially one who will do everything they say they will do. You don't play games with that. So then don't be surprised if foreign entities begin to move a bit faster than what they did before. Two things must happen with them because I'm sure they're nervous. They either have to conform also to get ready for the new leadership that's coming in or they have to make the move now before new leadership comes in. In either case, in either case, the world is going to move a bit faster with a bit more trepidation, which increases and gives us a little more insecurity, not security, because they really don't know what the true outcome is going to be. Right? So that's what we get from that. If you didn't watch it, if you don't get compromised by politics, give it a look-see for yourself. If you get Compromised by politics, this was a setting where they asked the same question, right? Uh, fair questions. Many of the Republicans, you know, they agreed with that. They said they asked fair questions. They did. So, if you get a chance to watch it for yourselves, look at it for yourselves. But 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 don't judge it. Don't judge the people for you know any lack of what they're not doing. Just see who they are. See who they are. Get a good feel of who they are and understand what the world will see so that you know firsthand, not through somebody else, but firsthand, what was happening. Mm-hmm. Firsthand is not too long, but it will give you a good idea of where things stand. 
And again, the Democrats are nervous. That's going to be a headline tomorrow. The Democrats are in trouble. That's going to be a headline tomorrow. I hate to, you know, talk about an entire, this party thing. I hate taking that party approach. But that's what's going to be on the headlines. And and they will start to introduce Kamala Harris. They will. Get ready. That's all I'm saying. Right? Many in uh, the corporate world have made their decision. I'm sure that many young people have made their decision also. Especially given tonight. Nobody wants an incoherent person to do that. And it just so happens, again, we're in a predicament we've not been in before. We have somebody who is, you know, age catches up to people differently. At the age of, you know, when, 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 when a person turns 60, some people turn 60, right, younger than other folks, if that makes sense. I had an uncle that was 94 years old, and he looked like a 50-year-old person. That happens. I got an uncle, I got an uncle right now who's close to that. And he's like a 50, 55-year-old person. And this guy's just not slowing down. Man, that's my, my grandmother, same way. She's quite old. But she could do more than the average teenager. That's just the way it is. So in, in my family, to be mentally, you know, cognitive for a long time, that's normal. But for some families, it's not the case. It's not the person's fault. It just happens that way. Right. It happens that way. So, see it for yourselves. But do me a favor. Don't get caught up in the rumor mill. I'm sure there are people that are going to come out and say, well, they're going to appoint Kamala Harris is going to be the new president. No, that's not the case. The outcome is going to be whatever the saints truly pray for. If we pray, if we truly do pray, I know the Lord will honor the prayers of his own people for our sakes, that prophecies are still going to come to pass. But at least we will have done our moral duty by the standards of the gospel. Hmm? Plus, it's already written that the Lord will not have us ignorant concerning the devices of the enemy. We're not going to be left in the dark. Many of those who truly believe in Christ, they can see the outcome already. They already can see the outcome. And just like other times where they can see the outcome, it's going to be just like they see the outcome. That's how it normally happens. So try not to be given over to speculation. Conversations that cause people to get nervous or to get highly emotional. These divisive things that happen, but see it for yourselves so that you know for yourself what people have seen. That's all. Right? Learn to be an observer of all things. Learn to be just like the Bible says, a wise man. A wise man is slow to speak. He's quick to listen and slow to speak. Right? So he takes in everything. He believes only those things of truth, but he can look, examine everything, but he only takes in truth. He can hear all things. But what the wise man will have heard is the truth. So he extracts the needful things out of whatever he sees. This will also allow you to communicate with other people you may not be able to communicate with. When you see what they see, you can also see where they're coming from. Why? Why they make the comments they do. This will enhance your communication. You cut yourself off from that. You can't communicate with people who have seen something you have not. Don't limit yourselves. Understand who you are. God made you to be able to behold anything in this world, light and dark. You know, that's called truth. To see the truth is to see the ugly and the pretty, the dark and the light, the good and the evil. That's seeing the truth. Seeing the truth is not just seeing the light. And you have no idea about the dark. That's not truth. To be sober is to see the whole picture, not half the picture. To be drunk is to focus on half the picture. Remember that. God called us to sobriety, and he called us to both see and hear the truth. That means you're able to hear everything. Take command over your flesh. Subdue it under the blood of the Lamb. 
Subdue your flesh. Everybody can get an attitude not to do something when they don't want to. So get an attitude not to act on your emotional states that your body has. And you'll find that your body will submit to you. But don't let your body be in charge because it's your body that's causing you to turn away from things. It's your body that makes you make certain things intolerable. You are to take command. God put you in charge over your flesh, not your flesh in charge over you. So take command of your flesh. It served you. Remember that you do not serve it. Do that. And then we'll discuss more tomorrow. Hey, I'm going to say God bless you guys. I do. I think that we can all step up to the table to really anchor ourselves in the gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe that we can all make a difference collectively. I really do. This place and many other places and collectively all of us in the body of Christ. I really do believe that. God bless you and your families. You guys take care of one another. And we'll see you next time right here at the Council of Time. God bless.